one right triangle trigonometry. Let theta be an acute angle in a right triangle and the abbreviations OPP, ADJ, and HYP refer to the length of the side opposite theta, the length of the side adjacent to theta, and the length of the hypotenuse, respectively. Then the six trigonometric functions of theta are defined as follows. We have the sine of theta is a opposite over hypotenuse, cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse, and tangent is opposite over adjacent. And we have the mnemonic SOHCAHTOA, so S-O-H, C-A-H, and T-O-A. So sine is opposite over hypotenuse, cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse, and tangent is opposite over adjacent. Then we have the reciprocal functions. Cosecant is the reciprocal of sine, secant is the reciprocal of cosine, and cotangent is the reciprocal of tangent. Find the exact values of the six trigonometric functions of theta. We have theta down here in the bottom right hand corner. The opposite side is 7 and the adjacent side is 24. We need to get the value of the hypotenuse. We have 7 squared plus 24 squared is equal to the hypotenuse squared. So let's take 7 squared, that's 49. 49 plus 24 squared. And we'll get that answer, and then we take the square root of the answer, and that's equal to 25. So the hypotenuse is 25. So the sine is opposite over adjacent, so that's our uh, hypotenuse, so that's 7 over 25. Cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse, and tangent is opposite over adjacent. Then cosecant will be 25 over 7, we have 25 over 24, and then we have 24 over 7 for the cotangent. On this triangle, the, the angle we're looking at, theta, is in uh, the top angle up here. So we need this missing side. We need one of the legs. We have this leg, uh, let's see, that, well, it's called A. Uh, A squared plus 25 squared is equal to 31 squared. So let's take 31 squared and we'll minus 25 squared. That gets us a squared and then we need the square root of that answer which is a decimal. So we'll just leave it as the square root of 336. So a is equal to the square root of 336. Uh, the sine now, so that side over there is the square root of 336. Uh, sine is opposite over hypotenuse, which is 25 over 31. Cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse, which is square root of 336 over uh, 31. And then tangent is opposite over adjacent. And so if we uh, rationalize the denominator, we get 25 square root of 336 over 336 for the tangent. And then cosecant is 31 over 25. Secant is 31 over square root of 336, which is 31 square root of 336 over 336. And then cotangent is the square root of 336 over 25. If sine of theta equals one-third, find the exact values of the five remaining trigonometric functions for the acute angle theta. Alright, so let's draw a triangle. And we have this right angle here. And let's pick this angle to be theta. And uh, opposite would be 1 and hypotenuse could be 3. So we need this side over here. a squared plus 1 is equal to 9. So a squared is equal to 8. a is equal to 2 square root of 2, which is the square root of 8. So this side is equal to 2 square root of 2. Now we already know the sine. Cosine of theta is equal to adjacent over hypotenuse. So that's 2 square root of 2 over 3. And then tangent of theta is equal to opposite over adjacent, which is 1 over 2 squared of 2, which is, uh, let's see, we have 
square root of 2 over 2 times 2, which is square root of 2 over 4. The reciprocal of sine is cosecant, so cosecant of theta is equal to 3. Secant of theta is 3 over 2 square root of 2, which is 3 square root of 2 over 4, because if you take square root of 2, times the top and the bottom, those two become twos, and we have an extra two right there. And then we finally have cotangent of theta is two square root of two. Special cases, we have a 45, 45, 90 right triangle, and we get a 45, 45, 90 from a square. We can cut a square in half. So if this is a side and that's a side, then we have this hypotenuse right here. So let's, let's try to get the hypotenuse. We would have side squared plus side squared is equal to the hypotenuse squared. So the hypotenuse squared is equal to 2 side squared. And so the hypotenuse is equal to, if we square root this side, the square root of side squared is side, and then we have square root of 2. So if we have side, side, h is equal to the side times the square root of 2. So the sine of 45 degrees is equal to opposite over hypotenuse, which is s over s times the square root of 2, which is just going to be 1 over the square root of 2. And then if we rationalize the denominator, we get square root of 2 over 2. The cosine of 45 degrees is going to be the same thing. We have side over side square root of 2, because this, if we're picking this angle right here, that's going to be adjacent over hypotenuse. Uh, that's equal to 1 over square root of 2, which is equal to the square root of 2 over 2. And then the tangent, tangent of 45 degrees is equal to opposite over adjacent, which is side over side, which is 1 no matter how big or how small. Uh, the square is. Let's look at uh, a 30, 60, 90 right triangle and a 30, 60, 90 comes from an equilateral triangle which means all of the sides are the same. So this is a side, this is one half of the side and then we have the height of this triangle right here. So let's find out what the height would be in terms of a side. So h squared plus 1 fourth s squared, which is this side squared, is equal to side squared. So h squared is equal to, if we subtract over 1 fourth, that's 3 fourths side squared. So the height is equal to the square root of 3 over 2 times the side. So we take the square root of this, you have square root of 3, square root of 4 is 2. So the height is the square root of 3 over 2 times a side. So let's get the sine of, let's start with the 30 degree angle. Sine is opposite over hypotenuse, which is 1 half s over s, which is just going to be 1 half. The cosine of 30 degrees is equal to, we have adjacent over hypotenuse, which is square root of 3 over 2s over s, which is just going to be square root of 3 over 2. And then the tangent of 30 degrees is equal to opposite over adjacent, which would be 1 half divided by square root of 3 over 2, which is 1 over square root of 3 if you multiply the top and bottom by 2s, and that's finally square root of 3 over 3. Let's get the sine of 60 sine of 60 degrees is equal to opposite over hypotenuse, which is just going to be square root of 3 over 2s over s. The cosine of 60 degrees is equal to adjacent over hypotenuse, which will just be 1 half. And then the tangent of 60 degrees is equal to, we have opposite over adjacent, which is square root of 3 over 2 over 1 half which is just the square root of 3. Now notice one thing about this. The sine of 30 is the same as the cosine of 60, and the sine of 60 is the same as the cosine of 30, and that will always happen with complementary angles. So as long as the two angles add up, 
their sines and cosines will be equal to each other. Trigonometric values of special angles. So these are special angles because they have special values attached to them. And here's the chart that we just filled in with the exception of the secant, the cosecant, and the cotangent. But those are just going to be reciprocals of sine, cosine, and tangent. Find the value of x. Round to the nearest tenth if necessary. So we have a hypotenuse of 7. We have a missing side here. But this angle is 35 degrees. Now, according in, in relationship to 35 degrees, we have the adjacent side and the hypotenuse, and that's cosine. So we can write the cosine of 35 degrees is equal to adjacent over hypotenuse. Now we just need to multiply both sides by 7. So we have 7 cosine of 35 degrees. Now you want to make sure that your calculator is in degrees, so if you click on mode, uh, we need to click over to radians. The default is radians. I mean click over to degrees of course. So we quit out of here and now we take 7 times the cosine of 35 which is equal to uh, round to the nearest tenth 5.7. On this one we the 41 degrees is down here and we have opposite and hypotenuse in relationship to this angle which is sine. So sine of 41 degrees is equal to 7 over x. Now these two can be switched. We can multiply by x and divide by sine of 41 degrees. x is equal to 7 over sine of 41 degrees. And my calculator is still in degrees, so we're good to go. 7 divided by sine of 41, which is 10.7. Inverse trigonometric functions. An inverse sine, if theta is an acute angle and the sine of theta is x, and then the inverse sine of x is the measure of the angle theta, that is, if sine of theta equals x, then the inverse sine of x is equal to theta. Now what that means is if we're looking for an angle, we're going to use inverse sine to find that. And here's an example. We want to find theta here. Uh, in relationship to where theta is, we have the opposite side and the hypotenuse which is sine. So we have the sine of theta is equal to 12 over 15.7. Well, in order to undo sine, we have inverse sine. So we want to take the inverse sine of both sides, which is theta on the left, because inverse functions undo each other. And we're left with inverse sine of 12 over 15.7. So when we calculate this inverse sine function, we get an angle out of it. And your calculator has inverse sine. So we're going to do inverse sine of 12 divided by 15.7. Now my calculator is in degrees, so this answer will be given in degrees. Uh, we're asked to round to the nearest degree, so that would be 50 degrees.